Good evening, everyone. Um, I just want to begin by saying thank you um, for everyone for being here tonight. Um, the weekend's results obviously still raw. Um, it obviously hurts, and I can imagine most in this room are, are probably feeling the same way. Um, but a, a really special thank you to those people who have taken the time to step back from that enormous disappointment and sent messages of support to the players and the staff and myself. And personally, I'm really grateful for that. So thank you for those people who have taken the time to do that. Um, however, uh, tonight's about celebrating what was a fantastic year for the footy club. I'd like to formally start by thanking Andrew Pridham, our board, Tom Harley and your respective partners and families. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> the unwavering support from all of you isn't underestimated or taken for granted from me, the football club or the players, and um, thank you very much. Andrew, where are you, mate? Yeah, there you are. Um, uh, you know, what you do in particular um, is amazing. And I regret we couldn't get you the dividend that you deserve. And uh, in financial terms, I'm sorry about that. But um, thank you for what you do um, for all of us and the amount of time you put in and, and, um, and for the sacrifices that Carolyn makes as well. So thank you very much. <laughs> um, I'd also like to thank Charlie Gardner and his wife, Melissa. There you go, Melissa, you've got a mention. Um, she's looking thrilled about that. Loves the attention. <laughs> um, if people only knew the amount of work that Charlie did behind the scenes, you'd be, you'd be absolutely amazed. Um, your dedication to the job, Charlie, and the people at this footy club is, is off the charts. So thank you very much. <clears throat> I'd also like to thank all of our staff. In particular, I'd like to thank our amazing, amazing footy staff. Every one of you make my job that little bit easier, and I'm very, very grateful for that. Many, um, especially the coaches, uh, are seven days a week during the seven months of an home and away season. You think of the things you miss out on um, over seven months, seven days a week. Um, it's pretty solid. It's a massive commitment to your job, and importantly to our players, to keep them and us getting better. Thank you all so much. Thank you. <clears throat> I'd especially also like to thank our playing group, led superbly by Dane Rampey, Callum Mills and Luke Parker. <clears throat> Been blessed uh, during my time at footy to have some of the best leaders, best playing leaders in the game, and it continues to this day. Um, all three are fantastic leaders in their own right. Uh, the AFL commitment is 365 days a year, during which there are so many ups and downs. And it can be a challenge to juggle the needs of 45 players successfully and all their different personalities and what happens over that 365 days. So, boys, your leadership of this group is invaluable. Uh, to the retiring players, and obviously Callum Sinclair and Colin O'Reardon, um, thank you very much for your wonderful service. Oh, I just wanted to touch on uh, Josh Kennedy. I know he's getting up here later on. Um, he's had more farewells than John Farnham with the singing um, tours. And uh, he said to me he didn't want to um, didn't want to do that press conference. Uh, I just want to fade off in the sunset. Oh my God! Um, <clears throat> it's just been an absolute carry on of the highest order, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mate. I just had to say. <laughs> I've been wanting to say that for a couple of days, but <clears throat> um, but you know, in particular, Josh, uh, the legacy you have left on us as a club and me as a person is really significant. Your uh, your friendship and your advice is something that I've always treasured. I really miss our daily chats that large, largely focus on the three Fs. Football, family, and fashion. And this was almost on a daily basis. The fashion was really, was essentially the lack thereof 
um, that one of us was guilty of on any particular day and, and there was plenty of days like that. Um, when he gets up here later on, we also had plenty of chats about hairlines. And uh, that's also a bit of a challenge, mate. Um, but seriously, you, Anna, Anna I know you, you, you're sitting there with Josh. Um, you know, jo Joey, you, Anna, and the kids will be sorely missed, mate. You know, you're, you're a legend. Thanks, mate. <laughs> to the partners, wives, husbands, and family members of the staff and players at the footy club, thank you very much. I know the toll it can take with the travel commitments and the pressures of working in the AFL environment where the scrutiny is unlike almost any other job. Your support in helping your partners is invaluable and that in turn helps us. Thank you. To our Sydney... <clears throat> yeah. I should mention at this point, Shelley and the kids. <laughs> Thank you, I'll reintroduce myself to my family network next week some stage. Um, to our Sydney Swans Premier Partners, in particular QBE, um, just an, you know, incredible, who have been with us for almost 40 years, um, Volkswagen and realestate.com.au. It's just a, it's a privilege with the amount of um, the brands that we've got associated with our footy club. And when I walk into our footy club and I see the brands on the on the door next to the lift when I go up to our, to our offices every day, I'm, I'm eternally grateful that we've got such great brands. So thank you for being there and, and helping us be better. And we get to the footy. Um, I'd like to again congratulate Chris Scott and the Geelong Football Club for a remarkable season. They were the benchmark and the deserving premiers. They are a fantastic footy club. And, you, and the perseverance and persistence is admired and respected right across the board. Congratulations also to one of the true champions, Joel Selwood, for a wonderful career. Uh, I don't know Joel that well, um, but you know anyone that watches him play his footy or to go about his business on and off the field, and from anyone that knows him, from Tom all the way through, can't help but have that much respect. There's never a bad word said about him. Um, he's been a champion. There's also been plenty said about the grand final. Um, it goes without saying that we're all terribly disappointed in the way our season finished. The performance was well below our expectations and what we know we can deliver. We won 18 games for the season, which is a fantastic achievement, but in, in the end, we, we fell a bit short. What we do with that is up to us. That's an opportunity, there's an opportunity in everything in life and that is our opportunity. However, tonight we'll also look at the bigger picture. Tonight's about celebrating a season. In fact, let me take you on a, on a brief journey. Let's go back to August 2020, back to an afternoon on the Gold Coast Stadium and in the change rooms after a nail-biting one-kick loss, a loss that was also against Geelong. Our season had just finished. We had been on the road for ten and a half weeks. Our homes had been in Brisbane, Perth, Adelaide, Melbourne, Cairns and the Gold Coast. We'd lost many long-standing staff who were forced to go as COVID cut the game to its core. We hadn't seen our families for months. We'd missed everything from birthdays to funerals. We'd not been there for loved ones when they needed us most but we were there for each other. As the sun was setting on the Gold Coast Stadium that night, we were about to head home to see our loved ones for the first time in that 10 and a half weeks. It was also on the end of our, our worst season in many years, winning, winning just five games for the season. Yet, here we were in the, in, the, uh, in the change rooms of the Gold Coast Stadium, hugging each other, having a beer, and just enjoying it each other's company. And in fact, Anna doesn't know this, but Joey said to me, let's stay another night in the Gold Coast and go and have a, <laughs> have a few beers. And I said, mate, Anna, you just, just so you know, I said, Josh, that's enough. Ten and a half weeks we've been away. About time you went home for the, for the wife and kids. Um, the feeling in the change room that night wasn't one of a wasted season. 
even though there were plenty of reasons to look at what we hadn't achieved. The feeling in the rooms was one of togetherness, one of taking a step forward, one that can't be measured in just wins and losses alone. I stood back that night as we were having a beer, I stood off to one side and I thought well, we've got a pretty special group here. Could I have seen that we were playing a grand final just two years later? Strangely, I didn't think it was actually beyond us. I knew we had the makings of a really, really good team. And that was before we added players like McDonald, Campbell, Goulden, Hickey, Sheldrick, Roberts, others that have all played senior footy since. Not to mention the addition of our critical A-grade staff that we have been so lucky to have joined us over the last couple of years. How can that be? How can, you know, when I was sitting there in the Gold Coast two years ago after a five-game winning season, how was I so confident? I didn't know what the journey to the grand final would look like. I had no idea. I didn't have a crystal ball. I couldn't have predicted that we'd be on the road in 2021 for another 10 weeks. I would witness the scenes this year when Bud kicked his thousandth goal. Or that we were playing in front of a number of sold out games this season at the SCG. By the way, get your members tickets for 2023, otherwise you might be starved. <laughs> but I did think that we'd be back in the mix to contend again. I actually didn't think it, I knew it. Uh, why? Well, it's the people, or to quote the famous Australian movie, it's the vibe. I still have the same feeling tonight as I stand here in front of you all. Geelong was that team that defeated us in that last game of 2020. They got to the grand final that year, a grand final that they lost. It's also not worth noting at this point that Geelong were beaten by 83 points in last year's preliminary final. As a group, we talk about focusing on the process. Getting back up again is part of that process. So are the choices that we make. This club is probably is an exciting phase as I've seen it. I've been here for 21 years. We have a lot happening and a lot to look forward to. The AFLW team is in their first season and we're preparing a move into our new home. A home that I went to with Andrew today and went and it's going to blow your minds, lads, when you get into that joint. Um, you know, we're fortunate enough when we get back the first day that the older boys get back in uh, on the, in early December, the first day you, you'll do it will be in your new facility. <clears throat> it's going to provide, it will provide our men's team, our women's team, our academy with an elite training facility. It will also be a home for you guys, our members, to congregate before and after games. How cool will that be? It's a great time to be part of this football club. In conclusion, and I'll let you get on with the evening, um, I was sent a quote from a very experienced football person during the week someone I respect. It reads, and I quote, failure is not the opposite of success. It's part of success. So when our entire playing group returned for pre-season on the 6th of December, we will all be rested and we'll all be hungry for that success. We will be back next season, another year older, another year bigger, another year more experienced and another step better prepared. Thank you for your support and bring on 2023.